I've talked a lot over the last several weeks about what's happening in the state of Florida with regard to foreclosures and specifically this uh, initiative that the courts across the state are engaged in to try and clear out the foreclosure docket. Now, the purpose of this video is not to question the wisdom of this initiative, what I've termed the foreclosure purge, but rather to give some insights on some powerful strategies that can be used to uh, fight back against efforts to force people into foreclosure sales. Now, I was in court just the last couple of days and I watched a consumer there with an attorney uh, who had filed bankruptcy on that consumer's behalf. And quite frankly, that attorney and the consumer were very surprised to learn that the filing of the bankruptcy did not put into place an automatic stay and therefore the foreclosure sale was going forward despite the fact that the consumer had filed bankruptcy. Now, I thought to myself, if the consumer and the attorney had done one thing differently, they could very well almost certainly have stopped that foreclosure sale. And so the one thing that the consumer could have done, should have done, and quite frankly, they could have done it without an attorney, was to file a request for a loss mitigation pursuant to the new requirements of the Dodd-Frank Act. Now, um, I'm reading here directly off the requirements of Dodd-Frank, and um, we style these things as counterclaims uh, when we go into a foreclosure trial, putting the plaintiff on notice that if they move forward with the foreclosure trial, we're going to be suing the plaintiff for the violations of the Dodd-Frank Act. And I'm speaking specifically of uh, 12 Code of Federal Regulations, Section 1024, Subsection 41G. Um, this provides that uh, the bank shall not move forward uh, with foreclosure on a, quote, federally related mortgage loan within the meaning of 12 CFR 1024 uh, when there is a completed loss mitigation application pending. Now, all of these terms are specifically defined within the Code of Federal Regulations and specifically within the Dodd-Frank requirements, but the law is very clear on this. It's when the consumer has submitted a loss mitigation application um, and, and the bank is reviewing that loss mitigation, they are not to move forward to, and let me quote this very specifically, um, a, a, a servicer cannot move for a foreclosure judgment including a dispositive motion like a motion for default judgment on the pleadings or summary judgment or order of sale or conduct a foreclosure sale until one of the following has happened. The servicer has denied the borrower's application for loss mitigation and the appeals process is not available to the borrower whose loss mitigation application was denied or the time for appeal has uh, expired or the borrower has appealed a loss mitigation denial and the appeal has denied. Listen, folks. I'm just reading some of the sections off there, but here's what is absolutely clear. The new Dodd-Frank regulations provide powerful, powerful protection for consumers that, quite frankly, the, the banks are working hard to comply with. I will give the banks a lot of credit now. Um, as I encounter this with consumers, what we're finding is the banks are working with us. So uh, what you'll see frequently is that when we file these motions, and sometimes we don't even have to formally file things, when we put our colleagues on the other side of this fight on notice that our consumer is working with the banks, um, and when that consumer does their part to timely submit all the documents, uh, quite often the banks will acknowledge and recognize that and say, Judge, we don't want to go forward with trial. Well, one of the unfortunate realities in this current environment that we all practice in is that sometimes, and in some uh, jurisdictions uh, very frequently, even when the bank and the defense lawyers go in front of the court and say, Judge, we think we got something worked out here. We don't want to go forward with trial. We certainly don't want to go forward with sale. Even when that happens, uh, most disturbingly, you've got judges that are saying, I don't care. You're going to go forward to trial or you're going to go forward to sale. Uh, I find that very disturbing. It puts the bank in a very difficult position. But um, uh, we as defense attorneys have to do what we can and, and really advocate for the clients. Now, uh, another place where I see this quite uh, disturbing is that when a defense uh, a defendant isn't represented by counsel at all. And in those cases, you have uh, defendants who are standing up in front of the court uh, with a plaintiff's attorney. They're representing the bank. And uh, unfortunately, that defendant that's not represented isn't getting proper representation. They're, they're negotiating with a bank attorney um, and they're not getting true advocacy. Uh, I just watched an experience two days ago. I was sitting in court and I watched a uh, defendant who was not represented walk up before the judge, and there was a plaintiff's attorney there, and uh, the plaintiff's attorney was talking uh, to, the, to the court with the defendant there, and um, what the defendant thought had happened was they were getting a continuance of the trial. They weren't going to get a judgment entered against them. 
But in fact, what had happened was the plaintiff's attorney was communicating to the judge that they were agreeing to a 120-day sale date. And fortunately, the judge, um, when questioning the defendant, um, was able to make sure that defendant was aware of what was happening. I give the court a lot of credit for taking the time to make sure that that defendant understood what their rights were, what was happening, because I've seen in many other circumstances where the judge just sort of rolls through things pretty quickly. The defendant doesn't understand what's happening to them, and they think they're getting a continuance when, in fact, a judgment is being entered against them, and that defendant is relying on the, the representations of a plaintiff's attorney to say, yeah, Go, go through the modification. They might even say, we're going to go through mediation in the middle of this. And lo and behold, at the end of 120 days, a sale happens and that consumer has lost their home. So I really encourage folks to pay careful attention to the requirements of the Dodd-Frank law and the requirements that the bank not forward go forward with a trial or summary judgment or sale when a modification is pending. But you have to understand something. If you as the consumer don't effectively articulate those rights and that you've done uh, those requirements of Dodd-Frank, you may not be entitled to the protection. So again, it emphasizes the need to have proper representation when you go into one of these trials or throughout the foreclosure case in order to assert your rights. It's, it's very frustrating to see consumers who are losing their homes at foreclosure when the bank may not even want that home at foreclosure. In fact, the bank may be more than willing to give them a modification or do a short sale or engage in some other settlement, but you're going to lose the home because the defendant just doesn't have good representation.